So our Parsha this week plunges us into sacred architecture, into the creation of the Aron, the Ark of Covenant. This small box, just two feet by two feet by four feet, serves as the heart of the Holy of Holies, itself the heart of the Mishkan, the sacred space that is constructed by the Israelites to be the home of the indwelling presence of the divine. The Aron, held aloft by golden poles, is carried by the people throughout their 40 years of wandering, and split the Jordan River as the people were entering the land. Split the river, you ask? That's right. I confess that I was also unfamiliar with this second water crossing, which takes place in the book of Joshua until this week when I was studying our Parsha. Did anyone know about this second splitting of the water? Can I, I'm really going to see your hands. Did anyone know? Yes. Good job, Kyle and Andy. Good job, Sia. So imp I, good job, Rabbi Jessica. So impressed. I was like, who knew? I've been spending so much time drawing on the image of the Israelites crossing the sea. Wow. Now, now people are just showing off. <laughs> I'm so proud. Very impressed. <laughs> And I was totally unaware of the second water crossing. So in the book of Joshua, when the feet of the priests carrying the Aron, the ark, entered the water, the waters are cut off, v'yamdu ned echad, and they stand in a single heap. And the people then begin crossing with the ark at the head of the people until the priests are standing in the middle of the water on dry land, exactly in the middle of the Jordan, while all of the Israelites cross over until the entire nation has finished crossing. And only then do the priests with the ark cross to the other side. On the first read, these seem like very similar crossings of bodies of water. But in the first sea crossing, Moshe and God take action and split the sea, a top-down miracle, an intervention from above. And in this second crossing, the crossing that seals the 40 years of wandering in the desert, the central role of the Aron, of the Ark in the parting of the waters, comes to teach us something new, I think, about what enables community to move through narrow times into new possibilities. The Aron was imagined to contain both the intact and the broken Ten Commandments, Aaron's magic staff, oil that was used to anoint new priests, and a container full of manna collected in the desert. The rabbis of Talmud imagine the Aron, this acacia wooden box coated in gold, presided over by two kruvim, two cherubs, as being too heavy to carry naturally on people's shoulders, as the Torah would require. And so they teach us that the Aron carried those who carried it. Nasa Aron et Nosav. The ark carried its bearers in the air. The people are carried, according to the rabbis, exactly by what weighs them down. The ark lifts them even as they labor to raise it up. And it's hard work. This is the way that people make it through the narrow place, by doing the heavy work and letting it lift them. So too with our community, dear ones. The labor of community building can be heavy on us. And even as it's heavy, it can lift us transform us, move us to new places, part the water, and help us move into the expanse. So we're moving into the season of our spring holidays, a season, as Aaron taught us earlier tonight, of miracles. This second parting of the water teaches us that what is at the center of our miracles is Torah, is hard work, and is community. The Aron is miraculous, even as it is so much a part of the regular infrastructure of Israelite community. And from this, we learn that we get to look for the miracles at the heart of our communities, even in our own hearts. The Zohar teaches that the human heart is like the Aron, is like the Ark. And picking up on this teaching, 16th century Kabbalist Eliyahu Davidas, the Rashid Chochmah, teaches that just like the Ark, a person's heart must be full of Torah, and similarly, a person's heart must be broken so that it can serve as a home for Shekhinah. 
For the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, only dwells in broken vessels, in those whose hearts are cracked open and humble. So may we carry the lessons of both, both of the water crossings with us as we navigate our own narrow moments. May we open to the hopeful song of the first crossing and to the committed labor of the second. May we remember especially the lesson that both crossings had in common, that the people did not advance until all had crossed, that the only way through this is holding on to each other and moving through together. Shabbat Shalom.